Hi everybody. So today we are going to learn how to do this. I want to teach you in-depth knowledge of this exposure. I know a lot of you are still having issue with it. I don't want you to again. I want you to get it right. Even if you want to move further to all this um, to screen print multiple colors and all that. If you are not getting this, there's no how we can move forward. So that is why I'm taking the pain again to teach you. Please, if you want, if you are very serious with this business of screen printing, you want to watch this video to the end. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like and uh, comment in the comment section below. So let's just dive in into the video. Hi everyone, so welcome back to another class. I noticed that a lot of you are still having issues with exposure. And uh, we all know that screen printing is all about, if you know how to screen print, then you know how to expose. The major thing in screen printing is exposure. If you can expose, then to print on t-shirts is very, is, is very simple, it's very, very minimal. And that is why I want to take my time again to explain it to you once again, so that you will understand it very well and be able to be able to do something even though you can't do two colors or anything for now you'll still be able to do something you'll be able to print on t-shirt so this is very important if i printing two colors three colors is even the advanced one if you don't know how to um, expose even to do all those ones there's no way you can do it this is the major major one major thing so i want you to pay attention and make sure you watch this video step by step watch it till the, till the end it may be a little bit lengthy because i want you, you to get it so please watch it so i'm starting off by preparing my screen so now let's say you have your screen you have already messed it up like me like this i have uh a, a something that i've exposed and i've used before this is it on my screen then the first thing i need to do is to prep my skin i mean my screen just to make sure it's clean again so you know you can always use uh your screen over and over again and i'm starting off by just pouring water on, on it like this and you can see after pouring water then i'm going to put a bleaching agent it can be hypo it can be jig it can be any bleaching agent of choice but i love using eye -co. so i just use i just spread it on it this way i make sure it's saturated so i have i have it this way and i just tap my hand on it it's going to bleach it off so i just put it put it excess make sure it's there so if I have um, tape, solid, um, solid tape, I have to make sure I remove it out. So this is what I have, making sure it's saturated. So, so I'm going to leave it for like two minutes for it um, to just do its work. And then I'm going to use my sponge. You can see this is my sponge. This sponge is basically for my screen printing. I don't use it for any other thing. When you are working with chemicals, you need to be very careful what you are using for all this kind of thing. Don't use it for anything that will go into the mouth. Please and please. And don't leave it where children are close so that they won't begin to put it in their mouth. All right, so you can see it's already bleaching out. Then I'll just rub it. See that is removing. I'm going to take it to the back, and I'll do the same thing. So you can see it's almost out. I'm going to continue like that until I make sure everything is finished. The longer the artwork stays on the screen, the harder it becomes to remove. 
it's, it's still going to remove but you, st you have to be more patient with it let's say the, this artwork was exposed like a week ago it will be more easier for me just one wash it will wash out but because uh, i've done this for like a month now so i have to pay more attention to it you see but definitely it will remove If you know that uh, all these um, bleaching agents, if you know it irritates your hands, make sure you always wear your gloves. So now I have this. You can see we still have traces of um, uh, the plastic saw on it, the hink on it. So plastic saw can be very tough to remove with um, just bleach. So what we are going to do with just um, IPO or jig. So, but we are going to use a more stronger bleach, which is retarder. You know what retarder is. Retarder is also a bleaching agent, but it's more stronger than all these ones. It's majorly for removing all these tough, st um, tough stains. Now, this is my plastic saw that is still on it. And also, I still have the traces of the exposed um, artwork so it's very important when you are washing your match you have your uh, jig or any other bleaching agent and you also have your retarder so this is the retarder I got this for just 200 naira so this is it so the next thing I'm just going to do I'm just going to put it on this you can see what it's doing already you see it's already removing it you can see what it's doing you can see you can see what it's doing so you can see See already. So at this point, I want to tell you this that you cannot substitute. Uh, I put with retarder. No, they they is they do this different work. So you cannot wash this thing without hypo, and you cannot remove the tough plastic saw without retarder. So when you are washing your screen, make sure you have your hypo or maybe jig or anything. Then you have your retarder with you. It's very important, and you have your detergent to wash to degrees. Now that I'm sure that I have washed it out, the next thing I'm going to do is just to put uh, my detergent and I will use it to decrease it. So this is my screen now that I'm sure that my screen is clean and uh, I don't have any stain on it I'll just go and dry it outside under the Sun before I go for that to do any other thing so let me go and dry this please stay tuned make sure you watch this if you are very serious with this screen printing of a thing as most of you have claimed that you actually want to know please watch this video to the end you don't have to skip anything it's for your own good 
please so the next thing for me to do now I'm, I'm going to go outside and i'm going to dry it another thing i want you to know when you are doing scrimp you don't have to rush especially when you are just starting there is nothing to rush about if you know you have something to do start from in the morning something like that so that you get it done make sure this is very dry then after that we are going to coat our match then before we go further to exposing so let me go and dry it so it's dry now my screen is dry very dry so the next thing i'm going to do now is to coat the mesh i remember the principle of coating it has to be in a dark place where there is no ray of light and uh, if you are using bulb it shouldn't be light um all this uh yellow bulb you can see the color of this bulb now is uh it's blue like so you can use that so that you'll be able to see or you do it in a dark place just make sure there is no ray of light the emotion the chemical this is what I'm going to use to coat I got this for 200 naira yes and the quantity is half of um, uh, milk team milk yes that small team milk so it's half of it so I got it for 200 naira. I'm explaining this so that you will know somebody has a question that uh, how the quantity of dichromate to add to the chemical you know someone was asking like uh, what is the ratio so i want to show you now that is why i am starting it even before i pour it into the container so i'll just pour it into this container this is my emotion container i mean yes i'll just go ahead and just inside so I'll just pour it inside you can see how it's looking see that I am taking my time to explain this thing to you step by step guide so I have it in the container like this you can see so now my spoon so this is my dichromate you know what this dichromate is is an activator you need to put it inside the chemical so that it will come out and it, your exposure will come out you don't just use only the emotion hmm? you don't just use only the chemical you use you must add the dichromate inside now Remember the quantity of this di uh, the chemical. So I'm just going to add a tablespoon, uh, this tablespoon of it inside. You can see, see. So that means if I'm using like um, a tin, that uh, milk tin, I'm going to add two or two and a half. Let me just add a little bit more. Okay, so I have it here. So can you see the quantity now? So someone asked this question. That is why I'm taking my time to explain this. Then I'll just go ahead and just mix it together. So it's thoroughly mixed now. So it's time to coat my match. My scoogey, very important. So I'm just going to spread it the way I want it to be. My scoogey, just wipe it. You can see? You can see? I'm not going to coat all the screen because my hard work will just contain this space. Okay, I'll move to the back. Do the same thing. You can see the way I'm doing it. Just walk through it like that. You can see what we have.
so i'm just going to put it i'm done cutting it now you can see i'm just going to put it in a dark place make sure it's in a dark place make sure there is no ray of light wherever you are putting it you can hold the fan yes but make sure there is no ray of light so let me go and dry it and i'll come back it will take me like an hour or thereabout then we'll come back to continue so it's dry you can see it is dry the emotion is dry on it now i have my foam this is it just to put and elevate it to balance it that is just the essence of this foam then i have my the glass here this is just a bit of glass and this is the artwork i'm exposing you can see happy birthday or coming so this is what i'm exposing remember how we do it you know the good part is going to face down it's going to face down and remember the way i place look at the way i placed um this the match is the outer part that is, is, is here you can see the inner part is here this is the inner part so is the inner part that is sitting on the foam and this is the outer part so i'm just going to place my artwork on it then i'm going to put my kerosene this is kerosene i'm just going to put my kerosene just just spread my kerosene on it like this and I have it. So after this, the next thing is just to take it outside. So this is where it's tricky for everybody. But just follow what I'm doing. It's not very sunny. It's around 5 p.m. now. The time is around 5 p.m. So I'm going to leave it for some time. So I'm, I will tell you how many minutes I left it outside because it's not sunny. Yeah, so I will just take it outside. All right, so I'm back. <laughs> I stayed about um, three minutes, and it's just because of the weather. So if it's very sunny, you can stay for like two minutes. So because the weather is about after five now, so I stay for like three minutes. So. I'll just go ahead. This is my foam. I have my foam here. Please don't pour water on your artwork. So I have my foam here. You dip the foam inside. So you dip the foam inside. Then you just use it to just start. Can you see now that it's coming out? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? As you are using your phone to clean the emotion out, just be turning it like that. Turn it, clean it, turn it, clean it. Just 
you don't have to scrub it too much and you don't need to be extra careful <laughs> just be doing it you don't have to press your hand on it too much I decide not to skip any part of this video so that you'll be able to to see well, as many of you that are still having issue with this exposure some of you are saying when you are uh, washing out the emotion like this you realize that everything just wash off wash off it's because you didn't stay the time you are supposed to stay outside. Sometimes I have stayed up to five minutes before. It all depends on the weather. So you can see what we have. See how clear, how neat it is. See, if you can follow this step, you will get it. Oh, sincerely, just follow it. The only problem that you are having is make sure that the emotion you are using is not that it has stayed in the house for a very long time. Make sure you are using an active emotion. Are you getting me? You are using an active emotion. When you mix it with the ratio I have uh, explained, and I mean the dichromate, you mix it with the same um, ratio that I just taught you now. Then put your emotion, make sure you, you did it the way I did. Make sure it's dry. Then put your heart work. And I know most of you, the issue you have is this weather of a thing. But just keep on trying. In the evening like this, the, when I took it outside, it was around after 5-5. Five, five. So the weather was cool. It, the, it was not very, very sunny. Though there was still some ray of light. It's not that everywhere. Is, but it's not like that 3 o'clock um, sun. So what I just did, I stayed for like um, 3 to 4 minutes. Yes, 3 to 4 minutes. That was when I stayed because the weather is cool. So let's say it's around that one two when the sun is still you know very very bright and very hot you can stay for like two minutes you are okay to not burn it's even better for you to stay a little bit longer than you not staying the required time so the implication of you not staying the required time is that immediately you are just uh, you know you dab your foam and just, it will just be cleaning everything you will not even see anything everything will just be wiping out even if you are not even putting any pressure, everything will just be wiping out. But you can stay a little bit longer. So let me just give you the range now. If it's very, very sunny, stay for like two to two minutes. Stay for like two minutes. Or if it's very, very sunny, you know those hot sun, stay for like two minutes. Then check if it works. Then you, you, you know. Then if it's not sunny. If it's just like around that five o'clock, you can stay for like four minutes. You get so let's start with that. Stay for like four minutes, then just do the normal thing that we are doing here. So it all depends on the weather. No, I cannot give you the specific time, and nobody can give you the specific time. Okay, that this is the amount of time you need to stay. So, but me, I'm just giving you the range, you know, and with the experience that I have in this. So you can see what I have. I want to tell you that it wasn't like this before. I don't used to get it at once like this. But you know, the more I do it, the more I just realize that I get better. You get the more you do it, the more you get, get better. The more you know how to walk your way around this. I hope you understand. So this is where I'm going to stop today. So the next thing you want to just bring, just put it on your um, t-shirt or any fabric you want to do, and just any any uh, hink that you want to use then just go ahead and print it if you are using nylon you use nylon ink if you are using uh, plastic you use plastic ink 
if you are using uh if you want to use water base you use water base ink you know when you are using water base you make sure that you can dry that water base in by itself you don't need to iron it although you can see iron it but that one will dry by itself but if you are working with plastic soap then you have to make sure your teflon is ready you have light or you have what you are going to use to iron it i hope you enjoyed today's class i hope you've learned something i hope you are watching you watch this video to this point all right so if you have any question let me know in the comment section below and please just appreciate this my effort by giving this video a thumbs up by sharing this video by commenting i love you if you are yet to subscribe make sure you subscribe for more interesting videos i will see you in my next video bye